The robot uprising has begun, so I figured I would see if an AI can create good tools for Unity and if we as developers have a chance to survive. So I jumped on ChatGPT and posed some ever increasing challenges. So watch to the end to find out if developers are really out of a job. If you came for the controversy, this won't be the video for you. This is more of an unbiased view of me scraping the surface of chat, GPTs, Unity code generation, and my prompt game. So without further ado, let's jump right in with something basic and we'll go from there. So first prompt, write a Unity editor script that selects all gray objects in the scene. Okay, so it's deriving from an editor class. It's not absolutely necessary when we're just creating, there we go, a menu item. It's given us a good name for our menu item and it's also named the class and the actual function quite well. It's also given us a shortcut. Now we didn't ask for that, but that's fine. It's actually a teaching moment. And also we wanna check that that shortcut doesn't conflict with other shortcuts that we create. Now looking at the code, it's finding all objects of type game object and it's placing those in the selection, which is perfect. That's what we wanted it to do. Now, the nice thing is it also gives us some comments. It tells us where it's gonna put it. So on our toolbar, it'll be under edit and it'll be called select all game objects, which is a good name for this. It also tells us what the script does. Now it'd be very nice if it actually used that details and put that in a comment above the uh, function there. But you know, we can do that ourselves and that it also tells us that this is an editor script and it's not for actually running in the game. Okay, so let's copy our code and it's great they give you a little quick copy button there. We'll jump into Unity where I have the Stinty construction set uh, from the asset store and I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna grab it yourself because you like what you see here. And I'm gonna create a new c -sharp script and I'm gonna call this select all game objects because that's what the AI called it. And let's open that into Visual Studio. Okay, so we've got Visual Studio here and I'm just gonna take everything and I'm just gonna paste my script over it. And I will save and let's go back into Unity now. Okay, so we're back in Unity and we're looking for our prompt and we know it's under edit which is quite handy so we go to edit and we've got everything down here and right down the bottom you can even see it's put in the shortcut there Control alt a and if i press that then great there we have it we've selected all the objects in our scene that's kind of perfect okay so back in chat gdp let's have a look what we can go further with so right a unity editor script that selects all game objects with the layer character. Let's see what happens there. Okay, so here we go. So same thing again. Brilliant, good title. Adds it in, uses the same um, shortcut, which will be a problem, but we can just delete that off. We don't need to use that. And there we go, look, it's getting a game object. It's put in a link statement and it's putting it back into the selection. So it's given us all the relevant details as well, which is really handy, obviously. And it's gonna be under the edit menu, which is funky. So uh, let's do it again. So. Let's copy that because we know that's going to be what our script name is. So create C sharp script, pop that in there. That's a long old name. Let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now we'll pop back in, copy our code, go back into Visual Studio oh, and we'll paste our code in and let's get rid of this shortcut because we know that's going to be there. Ah, you see, here's our first error. It's put in the where here from the link library, but it isn't actually brought it in. So we can control dot and using system link. So that will fix that error there. So let's save, jump back into Unity. Okay, so now we're in Unity, we actually have some characters popped around and as you can see, here's one of the characters and we've got the layer set up the top there. Let's bring this special out a little bit more. There we go, character. So let's try it out. So editor, select game objects with character layer and we've got our selection. Here's the Character objects, all our characters were selected. 
Let's just do that again so we can see it. Select all of our characters. These are the only ones with the actual character on them. Brilliant. Now the next prompt I tried was write a Unity editor script that turns an object by 90 degrees in the Y axis. This time it actually created it as a mono behavior, which was odd as soon as I put the menu item in and still done all the static, etc. Looking back at this, I realized that actually in the prompt, if you use Unity editor tool, it will create it as an editor rather than a mono behavior. So that's just something to bear in mind. But as you can see, when we copy and pasted this into Unity and tried it out, sure enough, it turned the crane that I selected 90 degrees. So the next prompt was quite a tricky one. Should people like this video I'm making and subscribe to Warped Imagination YouTube channel? Of course, being an AI, it has no opinion on the matter, but you all know what the right choice is. To press like and make sure you subscribe to the channel. So now I wanted to make the prompts a little bit harder. And I wanted to take a previous video, which was on the scene selection using overlays and add to it by doing that toggle that I mentioned in that video about selecting only the scenes that are in my build. Now, the first function I actually tried, well, the first prompt, basically all it did was give me a mono behavior that returned all the scenes in the scene manager, which obviously I didn't want. That's something you can actually use at runtime. But the second time I actually changed my prompt to say I wanted a Unity editor function that returns. And this actually gave me an interesting result. It gave me a static class of scene utils and it returned what I wanted, all the scenes that were enabled in my build settings. So there you are, there's the code that you could add to that toggle from the previous video. Talking of that previous video, I wanted to stretch the actual program. So I asked it to write a Unity editor tool that creates a toolbar overlay for selecting a scene from your project. Now this is exactly the video that I created last time. So you can imagine, I'm interested in seeing what it can actually produce. Now, as you can see, it starts into a quite extensive editor window, which is great. It creates an editor window. It enables the menu item. It gives you an on GUI that actually puts in a GUI layout toolbar that enables you to select a scene and open a scene and splits off all that functionality into different functions like get the scene names and open the scene. And that's all great code. Now, obviously it didn't do what I wanted it to do, which was create a toolbar overlay, but I'm guessing some of that's to do with the fact that toolbar overlays aren't really covered an awful lot and that it's a newer piece of functionality in Unity. And if you were to do it before toolbar overlays, well, this isn't a bad result on how to actually do it. So just be aware of some of the results you might be getting back might not be the latest and greatest functionality that you'll want to put into your Unity projects. Now I wanted to highlight the next prompt because it was commonplace for what I got back from ChatGPT and it shows the sort of things you have to do to actually enable this code to work in your particular builds in your Unity projects. So let's look at what I've done here. I've done a previous video again and it's the Unity decorator drawer for displaying a horizontal line in the inspector window. So let's try this out. We'll copy this code. We'll come into Unity. We'll create a new c -sharp script. Horizontal line drawer. We'll open that up. Let's paste this over and we can see that there's a problem. Yeah, it's not got all the libraries. That seems to be quite typical of some of this stuff. I and mean, you have to control dot after it to basically bring the libraries in. Now, I know there's going to be a problem. Can you see it already? But I'll show you in a second. Let's go back into our prompts. We'll go down here and we'll take our my script. We'll come up. Now this, of course, is a script. It doesn't want to go under the editor folder. It actually wants to come under the scripts folder. So we'll create a new folder called scripts and we'll create a new C sharp script under that called my script. And we'll open that up in Visual Studio. Reload it. There we go. And we'll paste it in. Well, it's got the typical thing. Hasn't got the libraries. Unity engine. There we are. OK, now when we try to use this, it can't find it. And why? Well, it's because this particular attribute is actually in here, which is under the editor folder. And as you know, if you've been working in Unity for some time, that the editor folder scripts, all your scripts that are under this editor folder will basically be compiled into a separate DLL from the scripts in your scripts folder. This is your runtime. This is your editor. 
and the editor can see the runtime, but the runtime can't see the editor. So how do we fix this? So what we want to do is we actually want to create a class with just this. So let's copy this up. We'll come back into Unity. We'll create a C sharp script and we'll call this horizontal line attributes. Open it up in Visual Studio. Here we go. Paste it in. Okay. Now we want to get rid of it in here, obviously. There we are. So we'll get rid of that. So now we have a horizontal line and also the script can now see horizontal line. Great stuff. So if we save it and we come back into Unity, now if I was to create a new game object, here we are, create a new game object. And under this game object, I'll put my script in there. And you can see there's that horizontal line right there for you to use. Now, if that didn't exist, if I came back in here and delete this horizontal line, just to show you it's actually there, once this recompiles, there you have it, the horizontal line's gone. So it does work. So in conclusion, am I out of a job? Well, no, I'm safe for the time being. However, I do promise to add a comment on this video to a future video of when that changes. And I'm pretty sure it will at some point. Now, is chat GPT useful for developers? Well, yes it is, and let me explain why. You look up how to code something all the time as a developer, as you don't want to reinvent the wheel. So you could think of this as another SourceForge or Unity tutorial site, or wherever you get your inspiration from. But like those sources, don't take everything you read as golden. You've got to know your stuff. Copying and pasting someone's code without knowing what it does or how it does it, it's not going to improve you as a coder, and it also leads to complications down the road when everything goes bang. But for now, though, with all the intended sarcasm, let us welcome the robot uprising in all its AI glory. And watch the next video while we wait for it actually to happen.